Welcome to the InfoWars Nightly News. It's Monday, March 10th, 2014. Now, we've been reporting on South by Southwest, a huge cultural event here in Austin. And it's about music, it's about film, and it's about technology. And of course, the question is, is it reflecting technology or is it trying to, or culture, or is it trying to manipulate that? Now, look at what happened this weekend at South by Southwest where we had gun control groups say they're going to use social media to change the perception, the public perception, and win the gun control debate. Now, if we look at this article that we put up at InfoWars, that picture right there is from the Guardian article, and it's credited to the guy who wrote the Guardian article, but that was actually on the Guardian lower down on the article. They didn't want to show you a picture like that one where they couldn't even fill three rows of seats. They have three gun control groups. They've got Bloomberg's gun control group, Moms Demand Action, and another one, and they couldn't even fill up the seats in that auditorium, so they showed you this picture. Now, this picture does not have the credit that it was taken by Stuart Dredge, the person who wrote the Guardian article, like the other one did. My guess is that this picture doesn't look like it came from Austin. That picture where the group looks like it was perhaps supplied by the organization. This is the picture of the massive group that showed up that is going to take over social media. Now we can laugh about that, but the way that they want to do it is Bloomberg silencing anyone who is for the other side of the debate on social media through places like Facebook. He's already met with Facebook as reported last week, and they're going to start censoring anybody talking about guns, showing guns. They basically want to make it like some kind of dark pornography. If anybody has guns or uses guns or you see guns, you should be immediately repulsed and afraid of that. Now, there were other things that were happening at South by Southwest. Everybody is saying that the sleeper hit of the tech side of South by Southwest is Oculus Rift. Now, this is a virtual reality headset, and it has quite a bit more to it. Listen to this description from CNN. They say the visuals are built on a gaming engine. The booth's floor and walls are equipped with rumble packs that help to create the illusion of movement. A set of air vents complete the experience, flicking on and off to cool the temperature and give the sense that the wearer has exited an elevator into a howling wind above. And you have a full field of view that makes it difficult to not look over your shoulder expecting unpleasant surprises, as they point out. And they say the possibilities are literally endless. Others say they wanted it to last for hours. People were complaining they couldn't get other people off of it so they could get a chance at it. Basically what they've done is give you an endless game playing experience that is so engaging that nobody wants to get out of the virtual reality into the real world. Well, you know what? Your life is not endless. You need to get out of the virtual reality and look at what's happening in the real reality. And the reality at this tech conference part of it is that what they're doing is they're selling this fun, trendy technology to you, and it's really a kind of enslavement. If I could come up with an analogy, it's kind of like the Pleasure Island analogy in Pinocchio, where these people go in and just play and play and play and essentially become enslaved jackasses. What they're offering you is the blue pill. And they're doing it in a variety of ways. They're putting these nice, shiny gadgets out there and telling you how wonderful they are and how you can't live without them and how really the surveillance state is not all that much of a problem. On the one hand, they will have Julian Assange and Ed Snowden talk about privacy. And then on the other hand, they will offer you these things and talk about how great the surveillance state is. Look at the way Wired Magazine is covering this. They have articles there that say, tech that tracks your every move can be convenient and not creepy. And so they show Disney here tracking people. And listen to this quote from the Wired article. While the ethical aspects can become a politicized, polarizing debate, about the trade-off between privacy and personalization. See, they don't even call it surveillance. Design will help us to navigate the many shades of control in between. You know what? There are no shades of control. You don't trade off your freedom for security. You just trade it off for enslavement. It's a Faustian bargain that they are offering you. And then they go on and they talk about how why you should embrace surveillance and not fight it. And of course, this is by Kevin Kelly, one of the founders of Wired Magazine. He says, there's no stopping the surveillance state because too many of the benefits that we covet derive from it. He goes on to say, 
that there are specific boundaries that are set and enforced, need to be done in a kind of covalence. His idea is that since we cannot stop surveillance, we need to have something that he coins a term, I think, a transparent covalence where everyone sees each other. Well, good luck with that. We've got a criminal class of people who are not paying any attention to any moral or ethical aspects. And it's not going to do any good to have some kind of a technological stopper on them any more than it's going to do any good to have a political convention, another constitutional convention. We have law. We have ethics. We have means that we need to control these people when they violate and break the law. And if we're not willing to do it now, Technology is not going to do it for us. A constitutional convention is not going to do it for us. But listen to how he couches this. Listen to the subtle argument for tyranny that he puts out in the form of shiny new objects and a new evolved society. He says, the self forged by previous centuries will no longer suffice. We are now remaking the self with technology. Ooh. Amplified covalence will shift society to become more social. And more importantly, it will change how we define ourselves as humans. There you go. We have some kind of a singularity where we should live life in a pan optagon. And of course, in his view, that's going to be a good thing. That was really a natural thing. In his view, we, we lived as cavemen where we all saw everything that each other was doing. And we've had this little aberration of society where privacy came out. We need to get over that and move on to the next evolutionary stage, according to him. This is nothing but sophistry, but it's a very dangerous sophistry. Now, giving us another approach at the same conference where Julian Assange, listen to what he had to say. Here's a quote from his presentation via Skype. He said, human society has merged with the Internet. The laws of the Internet have become the laws of society. And the NSA's penetration of the Internet has led to a military occupation of civilian space. You understand that? It's not just your individual privacy or your personalization that you get through surveillance. It is a military occupation of the internet. That's what the NSA represents. Ed Snowden went on to say that the Constitution was being violated on a massive scale. He said they are burning the future of the internet, and that is exactly what is happening. Now, Wall Street Journal Online pointed out that Snowden had three tips for digital privacy. This is an interesting article to read. I'm not going to go into it, but you need to understand that while we need to fight for our privacy with these people who are destroying it at the public level, we need to also do things on our own to take care of our own privacy, just as we do in the health issues. We try to fight to get the fluoride out of the water, but at the same time, we buy fluoride filters to make sure that in the interim, and if we don't win that battle, we still protect ourselves. So that's what he's offering you here, saying that you should encrypt your disk, uh, use plugins in your browser to keep from being tracked online and cover your tracks with Tor. So if you want to know how that works, Wall Street Journal Online has a good article about that. Here's what else he had to say. Oversight models, audit models, these are things that are very complex. They've got a lot of moving parts. And when you add in secrecy, when you add in public oversight, it gets complex. We've got a good starting point, and that's what we have to remember. We have an oversight model that could work. The problem is when the overseers aren't interested in oversight, when we've got, uh, when we've got Senate intelligence committees, House intelligence committees that are cheerleading for the NSA instead of holding them to account. When we have James Clapper, the director of national intelligence in front of them, and he tells a lie that they all know is a lie because they're briefed on the program because they got the questions, you know, a day in advance. And no one says it, allowing all the American people to believe this is a true answer. That's an incredibly dangerous thing, and that's the biggest failure. So when I would say, how do we fix our oversight model? How do we structure an oversight model that works? The key factor is accountability. We can't have officials like James Clapper who can lie to everyone in the country, who can lie to the Congress, and face no, not even, not even a criticism, not even a strongly worded letter. Uh, the same thing with courts. In the United States, we've got open courts that are supposed to decide and settle constitutional issues to interpret and apply the law. We also have the FISA court, which is, which is a secret rubber stamp court 
but they're only supposed to approve warrant applications. These happen in secret because you don't want people to know, hey, the government wants to surveil. At the same time, a secret court shouldn't be interpreting the Constitution when only NSA's lawyers are making the case about how it should be ruled on. Those are the two primary factors that I think need to change. The other thing is we really need public advocates. We need public uh, representatives. We need public oversight, some way for, for trusted public figures, sort of civil rights champions, to, to advocate for us and to protect the structure and make sure it's being fairly applied. We need a watchdog that watches Congress, something that can tell us, hey, these guys didn't tell you that you were just lying to them. Because otherwise, how do we vote? How, if, if we're not informed, we can't consent to these policies. And I think that's dangerous. Right now, my thinking, and I believe the, the majority's thinking, is that the government has the ability to deprive you of rights. Governments around the world, whether it's the United States government, whether it's the Yemeni government, whether it's, you know, Zaire, uh, any, any country, uh, they have police powers, they have military powers, they have intelligence powers, they can literally kill you, they can jail you, they can surveil you. Companies can surveil you to sell your products, to sell your information to other companies, and that could be bad, but you have legal reviews. Uh, first off, it's typically a voluntary contract. Secondly, you've got court, uh, court challenges to use. If you challenge the government about these things, and, and the ACLU itself actually has challenged some of these cases, uh, the government throws it out on state secrecy and says, you can't even ask about this. The courts aren't allowed to tell us whether this is legal or not because we're just going to do it anyway. That's the difference, and it's something we need to watch out for. Many anthropologists and archaeologists believe that before man even discovered uh, the power to harness and use fire, we were involved in agrarian activities. That is, taking the seeds of plants and then replanting them to produce more. The very foundation of our modern civilization and human culture is centered around the planting and cultivation of edible plants. Here are some of the amazing deals at InfoWars Seed Center at InfoWarsShop.com. The Survival Seed Vault by My Patriot Supply features only the finest survival heirloom seeds for a robust and hardy garden, even in the toughest times. We also have starter varieties of the deluxe seed packages for fruit, salad, salsa, peppers, medical herbs, and more. Go to the InfoWars Seed Center at InfoWarsShop.com. And remember, the revolution against tyranny is growing. Alex Jones here to tell you about how you can help spread liberty worldwide while also enjoying what I have found to be the best tasting 100% organic coffee on the planet. For more than a decade, my favorite coffee has come from the high mountains of southern Mexico where the Chiapas farmers grow their unique shade-grown Arabica beans. We have now managed to secure the sought-after beans in a highly customized blend. Discover and try a bag of the Patriot Blend 100% organic coffee at InfoWarsLife.com. This coffee gives gives you a long, smooth pick-me-up for hours without the headaches and heartburn that so many other coffees give me personally. Hands down, this is my favorite coffee, and it's taken us years to secure connections directly to the Chiapas Mexican farmers. Drop by the site today, order a bag or two, and I don't think you're going to be disappointed. Available in original or with our immune support infusion blend, you will be supporting a free press, all the while enjoying a truly great-tasting cup of my favorite coffee. Available at InfoWarsLife.com. Well, welcome back. Now, it's not just South by Southwest, but it's also CPAC that happened in the last few days. And of course, Rand Paul.